Sometimes you need what I call a quick creative win. And today I'm here for yours. These sassy and sweet jellyfish take just a few minutes, but are intensely satisfying to paint, no matter what your normal subject matter might be. I mean, cause we all know it's flowers for me, but even I had fun with these little guys. First, I'll let you in on a little secret. If sketching makes you nervous, I want you to learn like a child. Yep, you heard me right. These drawing books, you know the ones designed for kiddos, are surprisingly helpful for us adults. It's a way for us to wrap our heads around the basic shapedness that is required for drawing. It breaks down common subject matter step by step, and after following along with a few of these, your sketching confidence will soar. Today I'm using, again, Paul Rubin's round watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. I'll link all the materials below. Of course, the Art for Joy's Sake palette and a few of my own Art for Joy's Sake brushes. Here is that book I was talking about. I do have this linked below as well, but anything like that would work. Oh yeah, I'm also using a ballpoint pen. Sometimes I just really like the slow drag of a ballpoint pen, so give it a try. Let's take a look inside the book, and you can see the simple shapes are broken down. And I know it might feel silly, but if it's gonna teach you something really powerful, then go for the silly. Let's take a look at how this pen reacts to paper. And you, of course, have probably written with one of these, but if you've never sketched, it's a whole different ball game. You can get the smoothest, creamiest lines. It's got a really nice, like I said, slow drag. It gives you time to kind of react to the marks you're making on the paper. And you can do some really cool shading with it. If you want to see a little bit more in depth of how to use the ballpoint pen, I'm going to link a video below. It's a good one. Now it's a long one, so I'll put a timestamp as well. All right, I'm going to follow along with the book here on the left and you can see the top of the jellyfish is kind of like a kidney bean. When you're using the ballpoint pen, think of it as kind of like a pencil. You're going to use it in the exact same way. And don't worry about creating little scratchy lines or texture that comes with trying to refine a shape in a way that's pleasing. That'll just add character to your sketch. The little ruffles underneath the jellyfish, think of it as a triangle, and then you can edit that triangle into some wavy lines on either side, meeting at a point at the bottom. Don't worry about the tentacles. We'll get to those later. But the fun part is now, now that you've got the kidney bean and the triangle edited shape down, you can add a few more different sizes and most importantly, different angles. We're kind of creating an under the sea type of composition here. Like a bunch of these buddies are just floating around and we're gonna add some bubbles to give some movement to the whole thing. And friends, yes, this is a cartoony piece, but it's fun. Just lean into it, it's a great warm up. I'm keeping my arm and my wrist loose. I'm not worrying about the fact that my bubbles have little scratchy edges where I've tried to refine the shape. Again, gives a whole ton of character to your illustration. Let's go ahead and try a different type of jellyfish. And this one's kind of creepy scary because I think this is that man of war one that like, you know, unalives you. But anywho, he looks cute here. And to be honest, very similar to the first jellyfish. The only difference really is you can kind of see his underbelly or his gills or whatever those are called. And you can see here how I've taken time to edit that shape. And you see all of my thinking marks as I like to call them but you'll see, it'll come together and it won't matter that those thinking marks are still there and then I can't erase them. When you're thinking about how to create the underbelly of something, whether it's a mushroom or this jellyfish, think about two smiles and a bump on top. And that is basically how you're gonna construct this jellyfish. And then once you get the hang of him, you can add a few more. I did a little skinny one here up in the upper left corner. Once you have the basicness, of a particular character down, you can then more easily edit to create different personality filled characters. Now it's time to bring in those tentacles and I kind of for the most part have those kind of curving inward following the outer curve of those short edges of each of the jellyfish. Just gives a more natural look. And here we go with some watercolor washes. We're gonna keep it really simple. I'm using my cat's tongue and adding going right in wet on dry with a little bit of yellow and then a little bit of pink, and then fill in with whatever moisture is left on your brush. Now for that triangle shape underneath the jellyfish, I'm going with a little bit more of an orange. One stroke down the left-hand side of each, rinsing my brush and then adding a stroke to fill in with clean water on the other side. And where the two meet, the clean water and the color stroke, 
you'll get a nice blendy blend. Heading on over to this skinny Man of War jellyfish with just a dusty bluish gray that was on my palette, just picked up whatever. So I invite you to pick up whatever is left over on your palette. And then I bumped up with a little bit of the straight up beautiful blue from my palette to let them blend together naturally. Notice I am not taking a lot of time in each of these to blend and to kind of manipulate the paint on the page. I'm just putting down the color, getting things to a nice, simple, soft blend, and then leaving and letting things do their thing naturally. The bubbles are fun, a little trick. Just put a stroke of blue or a dot of blue in each one, depending on how small the bubble is, and then rinse your brush and come back with clean water not too much water on the brush or you could end up with a really crazy out of control puddle that is going to start to go outside the lines of your bubble you definitely don't need a lot of pigment in those tiny spaces to make some magic happen are you having a good time i really hope you are and if this isn't your jam i'm hoping at least it's fun and it might be a simple quick warm-up for you and if it is let me know in comments i'm trying this and while you're at it give this video a boop that's a like Loading up my liner brush now with 60% pigment, 40% water. I know there's been some talk in the comments here lately about the difference between pigment and paint. And technically all of this that I'm using is paint. Pigments are the individual pigments that make up paint, but I tend to use them interchangeably and I apologize, but you know, it is what it is. When we're in our artist brain, you never know what's gonna come out of our mouth. Using that combination of paint to water you're gonna create some colorful tendrils, nope, nope, tentacles underneath your jellyfish. I am going over some of the pen marks just to highlight, but then I'm adding some additional really softly and letting my liner brush run out. It's a lovely effect. And honestly, it makes things a little less cartoony. Now I've got my brush still loaded with some of that paint, so I'm going in and adding a few little cross hatch marks here and there, a few little more intensely colored shading areas with the pink on my brush. And yeah, it's so fun, right? Going back to those creepy man of war and adding a bright fuchsia pink underneath in that triangle edited to be ruffly shape. Same technique applies. I'm adding one stroke of pink right where that triangle shape meets the blue body of the jellyfish. Rinsing my brush and adding a little bit of water underneath using the pulling or ombre technique to blend that color down. If you're curious about this pulling or ombre technique, I am gonna link a video below where I talk about all the basic techniques of watercolor, but with a lot of fun twists and turns. You're gonna wanna check it out. And now I'm getting crazy because I'm gonna start to add these big old bubbles. And it, this is really just a compositional thing. I felt like I wanted something to draw the eye into the jellyfish more. And it felt like letting these bigger bubbles run off the page was a good decision compositionally because a whole bubble that size would be way too distracting. Using my half inch dagger now, going right in wet on dry with the blue from my Art for Joy Sake palette, right from the half pan. And then just making a mark there on the left and then letting my brush run out with the color to see what happens, and then rinsing my brush, and bringing back some clean water to blend it out. Finishing up with a few lazy dabs of that full intensity blue on top of the damp page, and I really like it. I'm gonna just resist the urge to wanna fill everything in and make everything smooth. Okay, you knew I wasn't gonna get out of this one without some spatter, but a little bit in the top right, and kind of the bottom, almost in the middle, just, just feels so good and so right here. And again, is another way to reduce the cartooniness of this piece, if that's not your thing. A few more tiny bubbles, and they're tiny on purpose to kind of balance things out. But it still feels unbalanced, and I think I need another big bubble or two. In painting, I like to make decisions incrementally, step by step, so that the next decision I make can help inform something that I'm thinking of doing next. Does that make sense? So instead, if I were to draw in the tiny jellyfish and draw in a bigger bubble and draw in a couple other elements, I'd kind of be stuck with those decisions. But instead, I started with the tiny jellyfish. I'm even going all the way through the painting process that we've already done on this piece so far with that small jellyfish. And I still, at this point, feel like I need a bigger bubble. But I like the fact that I did it step by step, so I had the flexibility to change my mind. 
Now you're ready to dig in, and I think digging in on some color theory for composition might be a good step at this point, because there's a whole lot of that going on in this video, and you are so ready for it. Until next time, I wish you so much happy painting.